And then every single stick that I can find, I'm just going to lay across the top of this. Here we go, Corporal's Corner, tips and tricks number one. One fire lay to rule them all. Let's get to it. Today I want to talk about fire. And I want to show you a way to create a simple fire lay that will guarantee a large fire column that will burn everything down to a good coal base. And having a strong coal base is basically where it's at to burn additional or larger logs and keep that fire going all night. So let's get to it. First thing, a good fire ring or a fire pit. You see me dig fire pits in my videos over the past four years. Here's the truth behind a fire ring or a fire pit. It does not prevent a fire. A two foot flame coming off here or a three foot flame that blows over to these bushes because the wind blows the flame over there and catches on a fire. The fire ring or fire pit did nothing. All it does is it contains your coals and prevents the coals from rolling around or logs from rolling around, thus starting the fire elsewhere, okay? It also keeps the coals tightly packed in an area for maximum heat. So think of it like that. Yes, your coals won't start a fire. The flame still can. That's why you need to be there to control your fire and have eyes on it and be there at all times. Then simply follow it up by moving any leaves or debris a good foot or two away from the fire pit. That way the flames, when they are blown around, won't catch those loose leaves or pine needles on fire. Now, let's talk about our fire lay. Let's go ahead and talk about our fire lay. It consists of three things, tinder, kindling, and fuel. Your tinder is what you're gonna to use to start your fire with. That could be natural off the landscape or something that you brought with you. Kindling, think of sticks anywhere from your thumb size and smaller. Pencil lead up to a thumb size and then ultimately your fuel. Those are larger logs that you're gonna add on to burn throughout the night. Let's go ahead and talk about tinder. We've already discussed that tinder is what you're gonna to use to start your fire. That could be natural or man-made. For me, when I hear natural, that means it comes off the landscape. You went to a red pine, you harvested fatwood. You went to a cottonwood, an aspen, or a tulip poplar, and stripped the dry bark off. And you're gonna process it into a tinder bundle or bird's nest. An example of man-made would be Vaseline cotton balls, or those cotton pads that have golf wax on the outside of them that you gotta break open that are impregnated with some type of resin um, or accelerant to get that fire going and burn for several minutes. And there's nothing wrong with that. What you have to watch out for are these companies that claim they're selling you all natural ingredients. Well, first off, you're buying it from a company, and that ain't natural. Second, most of the time they use natural ingredients like a regular piece of wood, and they soak it in, say, pine sap or pine resin to make it a piece of fat wood. So it's not natural, but they're gonna sell it to you anyways. So if you wanna spend money on natural ingredients, be my guest. If you know how to find it, you have the experience, walk out in your woods and collect it. Either way, you need some type of tinder to light that fuel. What I have here is tulip poplar bark. We're gonna strip that really quick and create a bird's nest and have a piece of fat wood that we're gonna process. Let's go ahead and move on to our fat wood. Now, believe it or not, after all these years, 18 plus years of YouTube and millions of videos out there, there are still individuals on YouTube that take the blade or knife and try to cut off chunks of fat wood and then sit there for 25 strikes on a ferrocium rod trying to get it lit. There's one true way to do this. Using the back of a knife with a sharp 90 degree spine or anything with a sharp spine, even this Baco Laplander saw, you wanna take that and you wanna shave off tiny, think of like sawdust particles and minute shavings of the fat wood. The smaller the better. Think about it. Is it easier to light with a match or a lighter, something the size of a pencil lead or something the size of your thumb? Common sense, the pencil lead. Same principles right here. You're making a small campfire. So the smaller the pieces, the better. 
quick shavings. You can hear that like that. Make a large pile. In my opinion, the size of a baseball. You can't go wrong. We'll do the exact same thing with our Baco Laplander. The Ranger Grip 78. Here's our bird's nest and our properly processed fat wood. Like I said, you want something that's minute shavings like this, not chunks of wood trying to throw sparks on it. Um, those that are experienced with this, you know what I'm talking about. Those that aren't, that's what you're looking for right there. Now, in the upcoming weeks, since we're doing these tips and trick videos, I'll go ahead and do it on my fire kit and show you what I'm carrying and why I'm carrying it. Today, we're going to use a ferrocium rod to ignite both of these sources here, these tinder sources, and I'll show you how to do that here properly. But the type of ferro rod that I carry is the one by Exotech. Yes, all this equipment is on my Amazon affiliate page in the video description box. But this is a very soft rod, taking the back of my Ranger Grip 78 of the saw portion as a sharp spine. And you can just throw sparks all day. The same with the Baco Laplander, that part right there. And then my Mora Garberg. I'd rather carry this than flint steel any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Now, all I'm gonna do here is use the edges of my fire pit. Again, it's oval, it could be round. If you don't have a fire pit, take a large log, stick it right here. Then you're gonna lay your kindling perpendicular into the flames. This guarantees contact with those flames at all times. And like I said, all you gotta do is stack the next bundle perpendicular to that one, then that one, then that one, or this way and that way and it's constantly putting sticks onto those flames. So all you would do here, using your outside edge, is lay them down in here like this. The flames are right here, making contact with those sticks at all times. Then the next one, you will land on top this way, and so on and so forth. I'm gonna go ahead and add the fat wood to the bird's nest. That way I'm not lighting something twice. See me do it one time. I'm going to take my Baco lap lantern on that sharp edge I showed you earlier. I'm going to place my hand on my boot over top of the bird's nest. Take my ferro rod, place it underneath here. Pull up hard and rake back quickly. I'm going to take those sticks we talked about. Lay them across here to guarantee they're in contact with the flame using that outer edge. Then once that picks up, we'll lay the next ones perpendicular this way. They were laid this way, so now we're gonna lay them this way. I'm open it up. Now we're gonna lay them this way. Then every single stick that I can find, I'm just going to lay across the top of this. And get her done. And you have the correct ratio of fuel, oxygen, and heat, whether there's very little or no smoke. Everything's working together in an inhibited chain reaction. And that's exactly what you're looking for. All right, let's end her off. More great things to come. With that, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One, my Amazon affiliate page, and two, my Etsy shop. Both links are found inside my description box. Now, please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. 
And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time.